to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro, Laura, and Rosenberg, good morning. Ebro is on assignment today, um, but today's an important day that we were excited to get on the air because over the weekend... Our friends Nori and DJ EFN had Kanye West on Drink Champs for the third time. And this, of course, is an interesting one because it's coming on the heels, Laura, of uh, Spring Hill, um, LeBron That's James funny. and Maverick Carter's company, canceling his appearance on the shop, right? Right, right. So, so it was a, set it, the was stage. a big it was yeah, it was a big deal because when I reported it, I know that Jeezy was part of that lineup and uh, designer Salehi. And um, and I heard it got really tense and really heated so much that the shop decided not to air their episode because they didn't want to give Kanye West hate speech a platform. According so, to their press release. So that leads that brings us to our friend Nori, who's with us right now. Nori and EFN decided to have Kanye back on Drink Champs, and I guess I'll start here, Nori. What was the logic for you guys in giving him the platform to come on and talk with you? Well, the logic was the same way you guys are giving me the platform. Um, I think you guys have love for me. You guys have respect for me. And you guys think that I should I should have a say. Um, there wouldn't be no drink chance if it wasn't for me coming to this very show and and uh, um, viewing my expressions. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I remember I, I, I came up with the idea to do drink chance after Prodigy wrote his book. And Prodigy wrote his book, and I had to have a rebuttal because obviously I was in the book. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I, I would I would come up to this show, I would come up to the other show, and I started to realize that you know what, mm, I should have my own show. So this 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 started from there. Now with Ye, um, I I have a relationship with Ye. Um, you know when he was going through a lot of the things that he was going through, he would call me and he would actually listen to me and take my advice. So I felt I could control the situation. I felt that I could uh, control the interview, and I've learned early on that I didn't. Like you know, um, as a black man, I, th I feel like I failed. As a uh, human, I feel like I failed. But as a journalist, I succeeded because as a journalist, you're not really supposed to have a opinion. You're supposed to let people talk. And my biggest critique on Drink Champs is, Norbert, you always cut people off. And this is the one time I didn't cut the people. <laughs> Didn't cut him off. And everyone's mad. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 so I should just stick to what the script is and cut everyone off. But I sincerely apologize to anybody that was hurt by Kanye's words, by Kanye's actions. Um, because I didn't really realize that sometimes I'm you're so much into the interview, you're not even in the interview. You understand what I'm saying? And so for the first five minutes, Kanye had walked in and he said he had people filming. And he told to my producer, he said, if you tell my people to stop filming, that he would he would walk out. So, so, the, so that the, the rhetoric of George Floyd, when you hear him speak about George Floyd, that's in the first five to eight minutes of the actual interview. I actually check him, and I say, yeah, you shouldn't say that. I actually check him about uh, uh, the Jewish community. I actually check him about the black community. But you don't see that till two hours in the in the interview. So what you're seeing right now, what we're getting backlash for, is for the first five minutes of the interview and. You guys understand that when you're trying to have a long interview or an in-depth interview. You got to pace yourself. You, you got to pace yourself. So, but if the people are mad at me, the people are saying that was irresponsible of Nori. I, you know what? I'm going to say yes. Y'all right. You know what I mean? Like, well, was, I should have checked him right then and there. So well, listen, said it, I hear you. And because I love you, I went and kept watching. I was like, let me, everyone's right. saying they didn't check them at all. I want to, I let me keep going. And. I, I got to the parts where you guys did try to push back. I mean, yes. listen, you you guys went the homie approach of like, hey, but yeah. what about you know, which I which is what you should do because he's your homie. Right. Like it yeah. makes it makes sense that was your route. Do you feel though? Right. My only criticism would be this, Nori. There was yeah. one part where you were trying to really push back at the end, and I was like, oh man, Nori's I was too, too drunk. drunk. He's too. I drunk. was too drunk. I was too. Like by the way, we're we're, we're called drink <laughs> champs, guys. We're not political champs. You know what I'm saying? We're called drink chess. We're here to get these people inebriated. We're here to have... Because that's when you get these stories that you guys love so much is when I get them drunk. So, unfortunately, sometimes I get drunk with them. It's just he 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 stood with that ideology. He stood with, with, with... And by the way, I love Kanye West. I really think that we shouldn't give up on Kanye West. I really think that... Oh um, it's getting tough, we should talk. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know this. I know this. I really think... 
Because like right, right, right now, to me, I just got the phone with Talib Kweli, and I said, Talib, I think you should reach out to him. I think he needs a most depth conversation. I think he needs a Dave Chappelle conversation because he's not having these. So when he's having them, he's so much in dominance of, of this. And like I said, you know, let, let, let me not railroad. I just I'm here to say I apologize to anybody who felt like I let, let them down. Because I did feel like I, I did let them down to a certain extent because, like I said, I did check him later. But by the time I checked him, it was late. like, it was already kind of like too late. So I can't, I can't be mad at Baller Alert for, you know, posting the footage uh, that I don't want them to post. Because I'm not mad at them when I post the, they post the footage that I do want them to post. So, well, yeah, man. I do feel, I do feel let down. I do feel like I didn't do the right job, but this is a learning experience. I am not, I did not go to school for journalism, but that's not an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a special ed student. It's not an excuse. Um, I, I, I should have checked him as soon as I he think, said it. Soon as I, it. I appreciate that, that sentiment. I, Laura, what do you got? I, I will say that, because I was so frustrated watching clips of you trying to get a point across, but there was never really a point made <laughs> because you were trying to gather your thoughts and you were clearly very drunk. But yes. um, I'll give you some pushback. I feel like sometimes when you when you sit down and you're going to talk to somebody, especially when you know that shows like The Shop couldn't even air their episode because of the hate speech and the consequences that things uh, can come out of. I just felt like, God, I really felt like well, well, you know, I, felt, I felt like I had control. You know, I felt like I had control. So so, and then and then at, then at a time, it's like you know, I've been the guy. I've been the guy that they, they, they said blackballed. You know, I've been the guy that they didn't let in Hot 97. I've been the guy that wasn't allowed in MTV, BT Studios, Viacom Studios. So I've been there. So I, I was thinking of that. I was thinking, I said, you know what? I, I felt like I was blackboard before. So let me let me, let me, let me, let me let this guy speak. And I did let him speak. And it's, it's a three hour interview. It was only two minutes of it where I didn't have control of it. You know what I'm saying? So, um. Am I apologetic? Yes, I, I'm super apologetic. It's a learning lesson for me. Uh, I've never uh, faced this before, but I want to say that I'm I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Um, I could sit there, I could say, yo, you know, that's only Kanye West, and it's only what he said. But I have a responsibility when I have an audience. And mm. but do you think? How about and, this? Yo, Let me question you on this. Do you think you were too thirsty to 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 have this moment? Were you looking just, too much to get the eyeballs? Peter, to tell you the truth, I already I already scored the touchdown. Right. It was just me spiking the ball. You know what mm. I'm saying? I had already scored the touchdown. I'm already. Mm. I, I, I'm just being I, honest. I feel like I feel like we're the biggest in the game. I feel like are. we are, and I feel like I already scored the touchdown. I didn't need the spike, and that's the problem. I wanted to spike the ball I, because I was very I was very hurt by the awards. Yes, I won yo. the award. Go ahead. I'm Go sorry. Ahead, Cass, no, so, I'm sorry. I got I got a question. So Jump like, in, Cass. So at no point when you guys saw this, you didn't think, yo, it might be a bad idea to let this out. That it might, uh, that it yeah, might, no. that it might, that it might hold, wait, hold, on, just it might bring us backwards for the for whatever progress has made. Because in my just in my case, after this, I spent this weekend talking with, you know, a bunch of my friends that feel differently, that have a different opinion. That were making roads in one way, and now we're like, "Yo, but your man saying this," and I'm talking, I'm talking to journal like, a, I, I, I'm gonna say like some of my white friends that lean a certain type of way, you know, we still have conversations like, "Yo, this, that, or the third. But now they're like, "Yo, man, but you, your man is saying this, and your man is saying that." But look, so now we having these conversations where we're stepping backwards. At no point did you guys think like, "Hey, yo, you know what? It might be a bad idea." Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, that's why I'm taking responsibility. I can sit here and say, you know, we didn't know. Well, I did know. I did know to a certain extent, but did not. But what it was was I. I didn't think he was going to spread this ideology. I didn't think he was going to go there. I thought that he was going to have a couple of drinks. He smoked blunts with us. I thought he was going to. It was going to be lighthearted. And yeah, when it, but when it, but, took, but knew it was it. only in the beginning. It, it was only yeah, in though. the beginning. I know. It's yay. I know. It's, it's yay. It's, it was only in the beginning, and he he threatened my producer. That if he couldn't film, he would walk out. So we, we was trying to, you know, that's how our interviews go. Our interviews go. We like Rosenberg been on this platform. We try to lighten you up, and then we get you drunk, and then we get you to to turn to our side. And I know we, what we it tried is. to do that. We tried I to see. do that. We did. We did. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's yay. And um, and I learned I learned my lesson. I because 
at the end of the day, as a journalist, I did my job. I let a person talk. As a journalist, you're supposed to have no opinion, no options, none of that. But I kind of, I'm, I'm black. I'm black. I'm, I am George Floyd. I am Virgil. I am, you know what I'm saying? I am that. And, and I didn't know until I saw it. I don't watch my own interviews. I just think I'm that dope that I don't even watch myself. You know what I'm saying? So when I watched myself, I was embarrassed. I was like, wait a minute. What did you just let him say? Well, and, and another lesson for you is that being a journalist, a journalist isn't just being objective, but it can be fact-checking too. And he, there were okay. times where he needed to get checked. That part, when the George Floyd part, when he referenced the Candace Owens documentary, like that's yeah. fact, like, like that's not a story she's telling. That that right. bothered me. You know what I'm saying? That he really it bothered me. That. It bothered me. It bothered me, Rosenberg. It bothered me. I um I do not follow that. I do not, you know, when 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 the George Floyd thing was happening, I didn't actually go out and march. But I was on I was on every, you know, call as if I was marching and as you know, I I felt that. I saw that same video. I saw that video. Like you can't tell me that knee was not on the neck. You know what I'm saying? I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. So when I looked back at the interview, I was like, damn, Nori, like, why, why did you wait two hours to, 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 to address that? Even though I did feel like I addressed it, but it, I, I addressed it way too late in the interview, way too long. And um, I'm embarrassed. So to everybody that was, you know, by the way, I could all, like I said, I could blame this all on Kanye West. I'm not. I'm one, I want to sit back and say I'm irresponsible for, for letting it go. I mean, I should have Nori- listened to Mav Carver. Yep. Uh, Nori, at any point, maybe off the camera that the audience didn't see, did you have any type of follow up conversation with them about this? Um. Yeah. Uh. My my whole thing was as soon as, as soon as as soon as the powers that be that we're down with found out about this, they just tried to remove the episode, and I wanted to defend freedom of speech. I wanted to defend that, so I was like, why? Like, you know what I mean? Like, boom, 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 boom. And now that I think about it, it's like sometimes freedom of speech just ain't free. You know what I mean? It's just, just, just a different world that we live in. And I regret it. Do I regret it? I want to. I want to be honest. I regret. I regret it. I regret, so if you had, to, regret, if you had to do it again, if you had to do it again, you you would have passed on the interview or not put it out. No, I would have. I would have been the better journalist that I am. I would have probably not drunk. I would have probably stayed sober the whole time right. and just stayed on the subject. Because I still I still believe, you know, people have a right to speak, you know, whether it's something that you agree with or not. But you have a a, 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 a right to also, you know, check them on it and check them immediately. And that's what I would regret. I regret and I love and, and no, like it was really interesting, too, because for people watching it, you know, you guys don't know Nori personally. And when when Nori's jumping in at one point, you're like, yeah, but yeah, yeah, we love Jewish people. We love Jewish people. Yes. Like, yeah. I'm like, no, he's sincere. Like, he has a lot of Jewish yeah. friends. He's really, yes. really serious about this. And Ye would not accept it. Like, he wanted by, to by say the way, what he was Steve saying. Steve Rifkin is in the building. Steve Rifkin is in the show. My friend Diego is in the show. Eric Manton is in the show. I Wait, Steve Jewish came with – Steve was with Ye? No. He, he just he, came. We, he he knew what he was walking into. Got it. I I needed I needed black people there. I needed Jewish people there. I needed everyone there to know that the people that if you are offending, they're right here, yay. They're right here, yeah. And yay has a picture. If you look at the the uh the the behind the scenes, that's yay hugging Steve Rifkin. That's Steve Rifkin hugging him. This is Which... one of the biggest Jewish people in the world. Wu Tang Clan. This is him. <laughs> So I'm thinking, if anybody's supposed to check him, let my Jewish constituents tell me right then and there. So that's the that's the reason why I, I was a little thrown off, man. You know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. not the best journalist in the world. So that's the reason why, like I said, I could be here and say, yo, that's just yay. But I want to apologize for my part of it. You know, my part in, um, you know, letting this rhetoric fly. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't I didn't notice it till it was out already. You know, because like I said, I don't I don't edit. We don't edit. Rosenberg, you you did our yeah. show. You know that we don't edit. We want the purest of the purest. Oh, believe me, I've wanted you but... to edit things from other people's interviews before. No, you don't. <laughs> but, but, guess what? We're going to start editing. <laughs> <laughs> Rules have changed. I know. <laughs> hey, Nori, um, we, I, listen, yeah. I know you're going to probably continue to get dragged for a little bit, and I'll now probably yeah. get dragged for being too easy on you. But guess what? I know what you're, where your heart is, and um, I appreciate you coming on and taking ownership today. Yeah, we appreciate your honesty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, 
I, I now know. I now know. All right, Nori. Love you, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you, guys, man. All right, one love.